can actually go back and look at what we did and see the things we talked about in case you forget about an hour from now, two hours from now, you're working on a chat tomorrow. i um, been using Zoom myself for about three or four years. I'm still discovering new features every time I play with it. Uh, this is probably my fifth or sixth web chat this week already, and I've got another 12 set up the rest of uh, this week too. So there's a lot going on. A lot to cover. We will have a Q&A session. So I have Paula and Lisa here to kind of monitor your questions over there on the chat. And then uh, anything that doesn't come through, I'll come and check on later on as we get to the end of this piece. But I have a lot to cover in a limited amount of time. So we're going to get started. Uh, first of all, just a couple things about Zoom so you are familiar with it. And I've had many folks take copious notes during this process. If you're a copious note taker and want to share with everybody who was with us this morning, you can always send it back to me and um, I can send it on to everybody who's with us. First of all, uh, Zoom has what's called a basic free account, which is what most of you uh, probably, probably have a free account. It's called a basic account. And what Zoom gives you with that is up to 100 participants in a chat at a time. And then uh, number two, they give you up to a 40 minute time limit. So when I first started using Zoom about four years ago, I'd have to make sure that my web chats with my, my students, I'm, I teach part-time at uh, Florida Southern College, I'd have to make sure my web chats were only 40 minutes or less or it would cut me off, I had to start a new one. And it just becomes um, tiresome. The district and uh, other entities have worked with Zoom to give us an unlimited time limit now. So you still have an up to 100 people, but you have an unlimited time limit, meaning that if you um, were, say, an elementary teacher and wanted to open up a chat for three hours, you can do so and have your students pop in and out throughout the day as they're working on assignments to work with you. Um, you could also um, have kids come back to you later in the day who had questions. And we have other trainings going on this week to talk about kind of time limits. But if you think about this as far as online learning, Whatever you would normally do with your students in the classroom, you need to cut that by half. You need to cut that by half because you're going to lose their attention very quickly when not sitting in front of you. And so that's something to think about as you break and chunk things up for your students to work on. Uh, maybe you work with them 15 minutes, give them something to do, have them come back 15 minutes later and talk about it. Uh, the second thing to understand about Zoom before you get started is FERPA, and that's the Privacy Act. And that's a very important thing when it comes to students and student information, particularly their pictures. So while we all have video enabled today, which is a great thing, uh, unless your principal has said otherwise, we're gonna recommend you have student video off. Now I understand it's hard to uh, monitor kids when you can't see what they're doing and the screen is black, I understand that piece. So right now, Lisa and Paula had their video off, which is fine. But if you're gonna actually go and record a video with kids and you're going to post it later like, like I'm going to do now in case somebody can't hear me or misses, is missing something. Um, that's important the kids pictures are not there because you can take the videos this thing creates and put them right on Esby and then you can go ahead and, and, and you know send that out to the kids and they can access it. So you want to make sure that you are covering FERPA and, and doing things like that. In addition, another use of Zoom is with parents. So especially those of you in the younger elementary grades, uh, primary, where the parents may want to get more involved, you can have a Zoom chat with them and set it up. And so I'm going to go through all those steps right now with you. And again, we are recording this call. Um, I will send this piece out to you guys as well. And then the district is working on taking one of these Zoom chats I've done and breaking it up into a self-paced course in case you want to go back and redo it again. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm going to share my screen a whole lot with you. Um, you will find along the bottom of your window, you currently have a floating menu bar if you're on a computer. I'll talk about iPads and iPhones a little bit later and, and Android and tablets and things like that. You have a floating window. When I go to share something, you're going to see it's going to take all of our pictures and put them in a sidebar, and you're going to have a floating window at the top of your screen. So you'll see that in just a moment. I'm going to share um, the login screen for all this stuff is where we're going to start today. So hopefully by now you all are familiar with Clever, and I'm showing you Clever right now, uh, the main login page. This is the easiest way to get into Zoom. You want to make sure, of course, you don't log in as a student, you log in as a teacher. You're going to use your same login you use with the district, which is your loss and number at hcps.net, uh, kind of like you're logging into Office 365, your same district password, you're gonna click sign in. Um, I have a couple logins here because I served as a teacher role last year, but I'm gonna click on teacher, which is what you guys will see. 
And this is your main dashboard for Clever. Now up here at the top of Clever, you have a favorite section. You can see I favorite a lot of things. Um, obviously, I was teaching elementary last year uh, during the spring, so I have a lot of things that are elementary oriented for my students. I've also favorited Zoom, and I'm gonna show you how to do that if you're not familiar. If you scroll down your Clever page, you'll see in the middle, you have an e-learning for school closure piece, and they're continuing to update this one and giving you new resources and new information and new stuff uh, to use with your students and break it up. And we have some of our trainers working on videos at various grade levels on how to break that up and use it with kids as well. Um, you have some instant login applications, but where you really wanna go is down in the bottom where it says more apps, and here is Zoom waiting for you. That showed up on your desktop, um, your, 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 um, your login screen, I'm sorry, a couple of days ago. And if you wanna make it a favorite, all you do is go over to the little heart and click the heart and that'll make it a favorite and it will show up at the top of the screen like mine does here. If you've already set up a Zoom account, when you click on this link, it will take you to Zoom. It will automatically log you in as you're gonna see right here. It's gonna log me in automatically into my Zoom account. Most important, ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't signed up for a Zoom account yet, when you sign up, you must use your district-issued email address. You can't use your Gmail, you can't use your iCloud, you can't use your Hotmail, or whatever else you use. You gotta use first name dot last name at sdhc.k12.fl.us. And you can see here, that's where my email address is. Um, I have a base account needing up to 100 people. And then notice up here in green that they've lifted the 40 minute time limit during the coronavirus. And we are told that's through the end of July. So that means if we do not go back to school this year uh, and we do online for the rest of the year, you'll have access to this to working with your students. Um, <clears throat> you're gonna find too today that my information to you may come from a different account. I do have two accounts. I have a Florida Southern account. And a couple of years ago, they gave me a pro account, which has unlimited time and can allow 300 people in a chat. And so that's why I'm using my district account to show you the same thing that we use. But when I do my chats, I use my Florida Southern account, obviously, because I have less limits on it. Um, this page is information for you about your account. What I find to be the most useful things on this page are the meetings section. So I'm gonna click on that for you and you can see I have created some meetings here that are gonna happen uh, tomorrow, Thursday and Friday. While you can start a chat from the Zoom app, I highly, highly, highly recommend that you do it here um, by clicking schedule a new meeting. And the reason behind that is you're gonna be able to set up various settings ahead of time that you don't have to worry about later. Now, for some of you, you only have 22, 25 kids, your elementary self-contained, but some of you, like my son, who's a high school chemistry teacher, has 160 kids. And so he may bring more of them in at one time, as opposed to having 30, 30, and 30, he may bring in 60 kids or 90 kids at one time. And thus, if he doesn't mute them when they come in, he's got a problem. You got 90 kids going blah, 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 and you're gonna have a problem. So we're gonna click schedule a new meeting. And I'm gonna call this my fake meeting three. And you can laugh at me all you want guys because well, the times are that and we need a good laugh. So I'm gonna pick a date. We're gonna do this one on Saturday. I'm gonna do it at 9 a.m. This is the start time of your meeting. It does not mean you can't start early. It's just a scheduled start time. It's there uh, for various purposes such as calendaring. Um, Lisa and I were on for a few minutes ahead of time catching up because I hadn't talked to Lisa one-on-one -on -one, uh, in a couple of days about this particular chat today. Uh, so I did that. This duration piece, I set mine for usually an hour more than what it is, and that's not because it's gonna cut you off. It will not cut you off. I do this because if you do a calendar reminder and you put it on your calendar, it sets it up for two hours so you know you have that two hour block scheduled. That's the whole reason behind this piece right here. Um, time zone, you don't leave, uh, you leave alone, that's there. Recurring meetings, some folks are doing this. I've worked with uh, my trainers in the alternative certification program, work with other teachers. They wanna set up the same time every day to meet with a certain group of kids. That's what recurring meeting is, and you can do that if you want to. It'll keep the same meeting ID and password instead of having to send the same invitation again and again and again and again. I let it set up my own automatic meeting ID. I make it do a meeting password only because we do have 100 people in this chat right now, and I wanna make sure I don't get 800 people in a chat. Not that I can get that many, but you get my point. They have to have the meeting ID and the password. 
This next section right here, I'm circling my mouse around right now, the video section, that is the most important, ladies and gentlemen. This is where it happens when you start your session. So for today, I clicked on for both host and participant video. That way, when you guys came on, you were asked to add your video, and you did. If I were doing this with students tomorrow, I would click off for participants if I don't want student videos at all. This would mean that no matter what I do, the kids can't have their video turned on. All right, that's an important thing uh, for, for videoing, for recording kids, for anything like that, FERPA, you make sure they're off. Now, if your principal has a, a video chat with you guys this week and says, hey guys, uh, you're fine with um, doing videos for your kids, great. If not, leave this one off, ladies and gentlemen. You will save yourselves on that back end of worrying about privacy rights and things like that, which is a, a big issue, especially as we transition. Yes, we're giving you some leeway. Yes, this is new. We've never done it before, but we still want to protect student rights. <clears throat> audio I leave is both. And by the way, those of you who are having audio problems and can see me, you can telephone in on that same link. You also may have people who don't have a video computer or computer cable and they can call in as well so this is the really neat thing about zoom is i know we're distributing devices and one of our colleagues is actually not doing jet chats right now because he's distributing devices at schools but if kids just have a telephone they can call in and listen to the same chat that you're doing with your other students they may not be able to participate in like some of the sharing we're going to do but they at least hear the information from you as well so telephone's important the last piece down at the bottom, um, I do not check enable join before host ever. And that's because that would have allowed you guys to come in before I even got on board. And even though only Lisa predated me in the chat, I came in yesterday a bit late because I had an issue downstairs uh, and I had to go take care of it before I went up and got the chat started and I had like 50 people. Now imagine if you had 20 students joining the chat before you do and we all know what students do when our backs are turned or we're not in the room. We know that, right? So you don't want them in the room before you get in the room. And uh, thank you uh, for your laugh, whoever was laughing at me. I see a couple of videos here and I appreciate that. I do love the next two items, ladies and gentlemen, mute participants on entry. That's why your, your microphones are muted when you first came in. And I enabled the waiting room. And that's where you guys went and were sitting and waiting uh, before that uh, time when you came in. Um, I don't mess with authenticated users. We'll talk about breakout rooms in just a moment, but you can pre-assign them. And then last but not least, if you want to make sure you record your chats, uh, you can click this button. It'll do it automatically. There is a feature I'll show you in a moment where you can do it manually, but this one here, as soon as your chat starts, boom, it starts recording and it saves on your local computer. And we'll talk more about that file in just a minute. Okay, so I'm done. I'm going to hit save and I've got my meeting all set up. And uh, here are those calendar invites I was uh, mentioning before where you can go ahead and, and put on your Google or uh, iCal or anything like that. Here's that meeting ID you guys put in earlier, except for one for my course, of course. And um, you've got the meeting password as well. This is the invitation we talked about. And I can copy the invitation and I get this nice piece here where I just copy meeting invitation. Now the one piece of advice that we have found, ladies and gentlemen, is this invitation puts this find your local number thing at the bottom. When you send this to students on Edsby, and I'll talk about that in a minute, you wanna definitely not include this last line. Cut this last line off, it's not needed. They don't have to go find a local number. They can call any one of these numbers in here and they'll go through. Anybody on a cell phone doesn't pay long distance anymore. Uh, but you would just copy the meeting invitation and then paste it in Edsby. Or if you're emailing it to your colleagues, paste it in an email to your colleagues. I imagine you meeting as teams or departments this way. I imagine you doing your PLCs continued. In fact, I had a PLC scheduled with the fourth grade uh, team over at Lithia Springs for next week, which obviously we're not meeting now. But I've told them, if you guys still want to hold our meeting, I'll schedule a Zoom chat and we can have a conversation together as a PLC and talk about how this is going for you and things you want to learn and want to know about. The last thing I want to show you on this web page is the settings section. And you click on that and there are a bunch of settings uh, that you can do and set up. The only one I really worry about here, because everything else you can set up when you set up the meeting itself, is if you scroll about two thirds of the way down, you'll see in meeting advanced, if you want to use the breakout room, you must enable it here. This is on the setting page in meeting advanced and you must set it up here. Otherwise um, you will not have that link when you go into your chat. 
And so we were practicing with this the other day and I didn't set this setting up on my district account, but it's set up on my Florida Southern account. And so I went and did a chat on my district account, like where's the breakout room button? It wasn't there because I hadn't enabled it. So if you find that when you are hosting and you only see that button when you're hosting, if it's not there, this is what you need to do and go in here. Um, all you do is check it and then you're good to go. The last thing of importance on this page is up here at the top under resources where you can download the Zoom client. Some of you may have gone into the web-based version of this and that's fine for today, but when you are hosting, you definitely wanna download the Zoom client. I'm gonna talk now about tablets and phones versus computers. Um, while you can do Zoom on a tablet, I have done it. You can do Zoom on a phone, I have done it as well. I've done all three methods, computer, phone, tablet. As a host for a meeting, it is most efficient and effective to do this with the client on a desktop computer. Mac, Windows, doesn't matter. And the reason behind that is you get all the features and no matter uh, how big your screen is, you get the opportunity to have separate windows. Uh, you may have overheard me, someone's question earlier was, can you move the chat away on an iPad? No, you can't. It shows up in the middle of things. The other thing about using a tablet or phone as the host is this, you may switch windows to find something and you'll notice in a few minutes I'll be doing that because I'll be clicking off of our chat window to grab documents I wanna share with you. Um, if you do that on a computer, my mouth keeps moving, my face keeps moving and you keep hearing me. If you do it on an iPad or an iPhone or an Android phone, um, your voice keeps going, but your face gets stuck the second you move it. And I've been stuck like this in the middle of saying something. Laugh all you want. It's funny. I learned my lesson after that first time because I was actually not, I was out of town doing Zoom chats with my class and I didn't have my laptop with me. I only have my iPad and I learned to do this before I switched the window. And that way it would freeze me in a smile. Uh, so it's really important that you understand that feature of it. If you have to use an iPad or an iPhone, go ahead and do it. Uh, but I definitely recommend using a desktop client. It's a whole lot easier. All right, I'm going to bring us all back into that main window again. And by the way, in this main window, if you haven't figured it out yet, up in the top right-hand corner, you have a link that says speaker view or gallery view. If you're currently in the speaker view, I'm quite large and everybody else is small. And if someone else were to talk, it would show their picture instead of mine. There's also a gallery view, which makes it look like the Brady Bunch. So if you've got a Brady Bunch looking thing right now, you're in the gallery view. I like this view a whole lot better. It doesn't switch between things. And right now I've got uh, 20, 25 of you in the screen. Normally you're not gonna have much more than that on the screen, but if you do, you can always um, switch to speaker view. You can go back and forth whenever you need to. So what I wanna do now is share with you guys a couple of things and a couple of windows. And the most important thing about the share feature in Zoom is, you need to have the item open before you share it. So I took a whole bunch of screenshots because while I can share my screen with you guys, when I do that, it hides all the Zoom windows, which is like, come on guys, I wanna show people how to use Zoom. I can't show them if it hides the windows. So I took a whole ton of screenshots over the last five or six days that I can share with you. And so the first thing I wanna show you is my window and what my window looks like, uh, whereas it may look different from what you see right now. So you're seeing a chat from yesterday in my window. And I mentioned, uh, you know, getting frozen in weird paint, uh, frames. Here's me right there. Um, but you can see in here, I've got everybody in a gallery view. I've got my participant window over here. This is the waiting room I stuck you guys in earlier. I'll show you this feature again in just a moment. These are people who are currently in the chat. Notice I have that mute all, unmute all piece. And so I can mute everybody or unmute everybody. And then I've got the chat down here at the bottom and I'll show you that piece again in a moment, um, how that chat works, okay? So let me get out of that one. And then uh, the next thing I wanna show you is the main invitation screen on Zoom. So when you guys go in to Zoom itself, the app, you'll get a screen looking something like this. And yours may have a white background and that's okay. Um, I happen to be on a Mac and so I use dark mode because I like the colors better. And so it's just dark. Uh, yours would look the same, just it would be in a light mode. That's all it is. Um, this screen is great. This is the actual app. This is not the website. So what I do is I schedule my meetings on the website and then I come here to the app to actually run them. Um, there are four buttons here. Um, the most useful button is the join button. So the link I sent you guys today, if you already had the Zoom client installed 
And for me, remember, sometimes the links go to my district email and it makes me want to join my district account and I don't want to do that. So I always use this window that's logged in for me as um, my Florida Sun account. I can also start a new meeting if I wanted to, just an impromptu meeting and send people a link from it, but I like setting them up ahead of time. But this is really important right here. If you have an upcoming Zoom chat, it's going to show up in this window for you. And what this does, it allows you to see the meeting ID, but also this little three dot button right here, when I click on that, and again, there's only a screenshot, so I can't click on it, it gives me the copy invitation piece I had in the website. So if I don't want to open the website, I can copy the invitation here. I can also start my meeting here and it will start up right away once I do that, okay? The next thing I want you guys to see is um, my menu bar. And give me one second. I'm gonna pull it up. So this is my menu bar. And what you can see is various controls, and I'm going to show you each one of them individually in a moment. But the two over here on the left-hand side, mute and stop start video, this is only for you guys. It's not your participants. It's only if you want to start, stop your video. That comes in here. This one right here, the manage participants, that's that window I was showing you a moment ago where it listed some of you guys in the wait room, and I could admit you all at one time or not admit you all, and I'll show you that one in a minute. The share button, everybody has. Now, on share by default, none of you can share anything right now because I have control. But if I wanted to, I could relinquish my share and allow you to do that. And I'll get to that point a little bit later in our chat. Uh, but only the host can override that. So if, if um, John Doe is sharing something, his stuff stays up there until he either leaves it or I override it. Uh, nobody can share when someone else is sharing except for me, the host. So in a moment, when we get to that, you'll be able to see that. Um, when you are sharing, which in this window I was, you can pause your sharing. We'll talk about annotate in just a moment. Okay, I'm going to bring you guys back. And I want to show you some of the video pieces so you're familiar with yourself. Because some of you may want to change your video and your background. So I'm going to share this one with you right now. This is what it looks like on a Windows computer. So notice I have the mute button and the stop video button. And when I click on this little up arrow next to it, I get some selections I can do. Um, now in this case, it gives me a camera choice. I can do video settings. I can choose a virtual background. Now, if you don't have this setting on your Zoom client, it means you need to update your software. If you have this setting and it doesn't work, it means your computer may not be able to handle it. In fact, most district computers can't handle it. They're, they're too old. But you may have, be lucky. You may have your own laptop, your own computer, or that. And when you do the virtual background, uh, which uh, you'll see here, I'm going to put mine on. And you can see I am at a Gator football game, which is where I'd love to be right now. Um, so the virtual background is neat, but be careful if you are wearing the same color as your background that you're sitting in front of. Um, you may wind up blending yourself out into the background as well. Sometimes when I lift things up, like I'll bring my cup up here and you see how it like hides part of me and things like that. So it's not a perfect thing, uh, but it is kind of neat to not sit in front of your room. And Paula is in front of Disneyland. We were there at Christmas time and it's kind of sad thinking it's closed right now, but it's all for the best of our community. But that's the virtual background piece you can get to there. Um, the other thing I want to show you guys is the share window, and I'm going to share some things with you in a minute, but I want you guys to see what the share window looks like. So when you go to share something with somebody and click on that share button, you're going to get a window like this. You will always have an option to share your screen. You'll always have an option to share your screen, and then you get an option to share your whiteboard, and you may have an option to share a device connected. I've gotten this question a lot, ladies and gentlemen. Can you share a, a document camera? Yes, you can if it's connected to that computer, like an Elmo. Can you share your phone or iPad? Yeah, that's why it's giving me the option. And when I show you the Mac screen, it gives me the option of both because both my, my um, iPad and my iPhone are connected to my iMac. Then it gives you any kind of windows that might be open. So at this time when I was doing this one, notice I only had one window open and that was the Zoom uh, website on Chrome when I was downloading it for my Windows uh, partition. Um, I would just click on the item I want to click on and share it with you. So that's all I've been doing right now is I've been clicking that share screen button right here at the bottom. It brings up this window and anything I have open, I can go ahead and share. 
Um, that's the easiest way to make sure you have the right thing you're sharing with students and you don't have to preview files. So what I'll normally do when I get ready to do a chat is I have um, a folder I've saved with all my screenshots. They're all labeled. They're all labeled so I know what I can share with you guys. And I'll share the whiteboard in just a few minutes. I wanna go over a few more settings with you guys. So I mentioned the, um, the mute piece and mute all. Um, I'm gonna share with you this piece right here. Give me just one second. So this is that mute all piece. And um, this is the waiting room, by the way, again, where I had you guys waiting. I love the waiting room. It's one of the best features of Zoom. But as you look at this here, you can see that Jody, Rosemary, and Estep were all waiting to get in the room. Barb and I were in the room. Um, I could message them if I want to while they're in the room. I can also admit them all at the same time. I can admit them individually. I can remove them. Co-teachers, if you are a co-teacher with ESC or even just co-teaching if you're both gen ed, this is a great way to set up a chat to do your, to, uh, work with your students together. And then the two of you can come in ahead of time, have a quick conversation, and then go back and admit the students. So that's a great feature here about that. Also, you can see Barb's camera was off, which is why there's a red line through it. Um, if her microphone was off, a red line will be through that. Down here at the bottom, I already mentioned the mute all, unmute all, that would do everybody in the chat at one time. But over here, while you're in the weight room, this is an important feature, especially with your kids. I got mute on entry, but look at the second one. Allow participants to unmute themselves. I have unchecked that for our chat, because otherwise you guys would be able to unmute yourself at any time, okay? I can let you rename yourself or not let you rename yourself. We'll go over that in just a few minutes. I can lock the meeting. And then once I start admitting participants, I uncheck this last box, put participants in waiting room on entry, because then it just lets you come in automatically. Otherwise, I got to keep going back to the window and saying, admit, 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 admit. And uh, yesterday, I forgot to uncheck this box. I had like five people waiting for 15 minutes to get in, and I missed, they missed part of the chat. That's one of the reasons I'm recording them in case you do miss that piece. So that's the mute all feature. The other thing I want to show you guys in the chat, um, and this is a, a huge piece. I'm going to show you the Windows version this time. So this is the Windows version. I got that participant piece up here. But here's the Zoom group chat at the bottom. And this is that three dot piece that I have on the right as the host. Notice there are several settings here. By default, many times you have everyone publicly and privately, and ladies and gentlemen, that is a very, very bad thing. Imagine what your students would be private messaging each other and you can't monitor it. So this is a feature, if you're gonna use the chat with your students, you definitely want to come in and change it to everyone publicly, and that would mean that your students cannot chat with each other. They can only chat with you directly or in the whole group where you can see it. Uh, we know what students might do in the background without it. We see it all day on the, on the web and stories of kids sending people inappropriate stuff. We don't need that here. So this feature's there for you, but you can actually turn it off too if you really wanted to. But it's a great feature, especially if your kids are like an intermediate or up, they can definitely type very uh, decently well, at least I hope, and get information to you and questions they may have. So you don't have to stop every moment and turn on their mic and turn off their mic and things like that. So another, another great feature for you guys on the share piece. Um, let's see, another thing we wanna do is raising your hand. So if you all will go to the bottom of your screen, uh, hover your mouse over participants and click on that, and you should have a window open up and hopefully um, you have an opportunity to raise your hand virtually. And I see a couple of you figured it out already. So Lynn, I see your hand raised up. Lynn, I'm gonna lower your hand. I'm gonna unmute you, say hello, Lynn. Hi. Hi, Lynn, nice to see you, thanks for coming. And I see Natalie, you've done that. I'm gonna lower your hand, I'm gonna unmute you, say hi, Natalie. All right, so I've got you as well. Um, uh, Mac too, you're raising your hand real because you didn't find the virtual hand, I'm guessing. Um, let's see, who else I can have? Debbie, hey, how are you? Hi. You're on the beach, looks nice. <laughs> yes. All right, so again, you have that feature here as well. Let me show you real quick what that looks like from my side of things when somebody raises their virtual hand. So you can see here in this video chat from yesterday, this person, when I hover over them, it has their hand up and I can then uh, click on this to lower their hand. And then I'll also have controls for muting and unmuting them in the same screen when that comes up. 
So another useful feature, if a small number of students, obviously you don't wanna do this in a chat like today where there are um, 97 of you right now, uh, that would not allow me to see all of them because I can't see all of you on the screen at the same time. But if you're doing it with a small number of kids, 22 to 24 kids or less, you can definitely see them all on the same screen at the same time and know when they have or have not raised their hand and you can lower it for that purpose. Or with a larger group, we use the chat feature and then I can go in and, and read those questions later on and answer those questions for folks when they have them. So that's Scott, the raise your hand feature. They're asking you to go over the message chat box settings again. Okay, sure thing. I will bring that back up. Thank you, Paula. You're welcome. All right, so here's the chat window again. I got to this by clicking on the chat icon at the bottom and opened it up. Um, there are two settings here that you will see. On the left is an everyone. This, is, this means if I message around, it goes to everyone. As host, you can click on this and message anybody individually as well. So if, for example, Paula has been gone for a while and I haven't heard from her, um, I can click on this and message just Paula privately. But the one on the right is the most important one, the three dots. You'll have a three dots. You only have this uh, when you are the host. And so right now I have it and you guys won't. But you can change who participants can chat with. And I can go to no one, host only, everyone publicly, or everyone publicly and privately. So if I use that last setting at the bottom, it means that you guys would be able to message each other. Meaning your students could message each other and you wouldn't be able to see it. So you definitely don't want that last setting. This setting where I have it set right now, which is what I use for all of my chats, allows you guys to message me privately or vice versa. I can message you privately and then you can only message to the everyone group. I did that on purpose today because if you guys were messaging me privately, obviously I'm not answering those questions. Paul is monitoring them and, and Lisa's monitoring them and I'm responding based on that, okay? Any other question on that, let Paula know or let Lisa know, and we'll come back to that a little bit later. Um, <clears throat> so that's that feature. We've got the start stop video. We've got in um, managing participants. We've got sharing your screen. We've got the chat feature. I wanna show you guys the virtual whiteboard right now. So I'm gonna share that one with you. And this is a really, really neat feature that um, you guys can use with students. So virtual whiteboard is just that. It's a virtual whiteboard and I can actually type problems on uh, text in here. I can actually write on here and some of you will be quicker than others and figure out you can write too. Oh, there's a lovely eight because you can see my handwriting is the best when I taught middle school. And I can add stickers and stuff like that. Now, if you're looking for where this is at the top of your, uh, your desktop, you should have a floating window with a view options button. You click on that and you should have a button that says annotate. And that will allow you to write on this. By the way, can you not only write on this, you can also annotate onto any document you share. So for example, if I am sharing a, a article I'm doing with kids and reading, I can share the article and I can underline and text mark the article live with the kids. I don't have to use a document camera, I can annotate it. Um, this is a feature that you can also change the settings on and allow kids to, to write and not to write. You can do it both ways. But I see this as a great benefit, especially uh, you elementary folks working with kids on learning how to annotate text and mark it, and you can have them practice with you at the same time. It's not just you doing it. Uh, they can do those things as well, and you can see everybody's having fun. The one beauty of being the moderator of this chat is I can clear everything at one time and let you guys start over again. Uh, so a lot of features here that are really useful, and I'm going to talk about this for a minute, ladies and gentlemen, because... Let's just say this, you're gonna do a Zoom chat with your students and you're gonna have some bruises and bumps and hiccups and, and speed bumps along the way. And you know what, it's okay, it's okay. You are learning, you're figuring things out, you're trying to find ways to do things. Um, we were re-recording this chat, the same thing I'm doing with you guys last night and I had my son on and, and a colleague of mine on and we were doing this in, in, in real time. And you know, my son's like, yeah, I can actually text mark that article you put up there, dad. And so that's a really neat feature if you're trying to teach kids those same skills, even though they're not sitting in front of you right now. Um, so that's something that's really cool. I like this feature. Yes, I like it too. Um, there is also a way, Cinnamon just figured out that you can actually create an arrow with your name in it. 
Um, I haven't played with every feature in here, but it definitely is cool. Now, one last thing, in my window, I have a save button. So I can save this whiteboard with all the work we've done on it, clear it, and then go again. This might be very important if A, I wanna publish the whiteboard for my students on Ed's B or somewhere else. This might also be important if I wanna publish um, this uh, in a way that my student, I can use it for another class, like a screen share and show everybody what I did. Here's what I did with first period guys. Here's what I do with my morning group or here's what we did in math. I can do all that kind of stuff here on the whiteboard as well. Oh, thank you for the go Gators. Yep, yep, go Gators. I need to drink, there we go. It's only Gatorade, I promise. It's definitely Gatorade, not Powerade. Y'all can laugh, especially you non-Gator fans out there. You can laugh. It is Gatorade. Okay. I'm going to close that virtual whiteboard now. Um, one neat thing, by the way, if I did not erase what was on it and I go right back to it, it's all still there. So it keeps it during the current chat, not the next chat. So if you don't click save on this thing, it does not save it for you. Okay, let me get that out of the way. Uh, let me just double check and make sure I haven't missed any of the features I want to show you guys. Oh, I do want to show you this, the virtual background window. If you haven't figured it out yet or don't have a computer uh, that can do it, this is what it looks like when you go, and I got another dumb face on this. Look at this, jeez. I did a great job capturing that one, didn't I? Um, uh, we can tell who is actually contributing, though, to the whiteboard, can we? We haven't figured out a way to tell. No, not unless they've put their name on something, no. Um, no, I'm still working with that one. I'm still learning, guys, as I go along. And unfortunately, I have four of these today, and so I won't have time to play with it much. But it, I'll tell you what, I'll give you guys some advice later, and as you play with stuff figured out, you're going to send it back to me, and we'll be able to incorporate this in the later chats. Um, I do want to show you this feature, the share screen feature, uh, virtual background. If I had clicked none, it would have my room behind me but it comes preloaded with some documents and then you can add other items in by clicking this plus over here. And just about any image you take can be put in there. Um, so for example, I'm gonna change my background again. And this time I'm gonna go, this is uh, Gulf Falls Falls in Iceland. So I'm gonna hang out in Iceland for a little while. So any picture you take, any picture you download, you can pretty much put as your virtual background. Just make sure that uh, your clothing does not match the background in the room behind you. Uh, which luckily mine is a very, very pale green and, and lines. So I'm wearing a blue shirt, so I'm not right. blending in with the background. But I saw somebody the other day, they went on and they put a virtual background and all you could see was their glasses because the rest of their body all blended in with the background behind them. It was kind of weird. Okay, so that's that feature. Um, oh, I saw a question I forgot to show you. Yes, you can share a PowerPoint in Zoom. Uh, great, great question. I'm going to do that right now because we can't. The key thing is, remember, you want to have it open ahead of time, and you want to have the slideshow playing in the background ahead of time. And so what I'm going to share with you guys now is my PowerPoint. And just like I can do anywhere else, I can go forwards and backwards and go through the PowerPoint with the kids at the same time. I do not know if videos do their due justice and due diligence on this piece um, and show up because I haven't had time to play with that piece, like if you have an embedded video. Uh, but I know YouTube will play through normally with the sound for the kids. So that was a great question I happen to get. All right. Um, let's see. Last feature, because we're getting kind of at 40 minutes now, I want to show you guys is the breakout room feature. I'm going to first show you guys what that looks like. Um, and then I'm going to show you guys how it works. So give me just one second. All right. So the breakout room, when you go to set up breakout rooms, you get this window that comes up. And again, uh, mine's on a Mac, so it's dark mode, but yours would look however it is. Uh, based on your number of participants, this chat yesterday had 90 people. I was assigned them to 10 different rooms and notice it says it can put nine in a room for me. It will do it automatically for you or you can do it manually. The only difference when you do it manually is um, it gives you a list and you can tell who you want in which room. So I want John in this room and Jane in this room and Jamie in this room and Jonah in this room, that kind of stuff you can do. Um, I don't do it with a group of 97 people because I'd be looking at a list that's three miles long and I can't do that. So I use the automatic feature and then all you do is create the breakout rooms. Now there are some settings in breakout rooms like um, by default, it goes back to the main screen when you close them in 60 seconds. Uh, in settings, when it's set it up, I, I've changed mine to 15 seconds. And I want you guys back sooner. 
Uh, but I'm going to put you guys into breakout rooms real quick. When you get there, um, you will figure out very, very quickly. I'm going to put you guys in about, um, let's see, 12 rooms. Um, you will figure out two things. Number one, you can unmute yourself once you go in there. So that means you don't have to go in and unmute everybody. Number two, you're going to figure out that you can share documents with each other, including the virtual whiteboard. Number three, as moderator, as host, I can pop into each room, but I cannot monitor them when I'm not in there. So again, another just cautious feature to think about of, do I want this? Do I want to have all these rooms with kids just talking and I'm not there or I can't monitor what's going on, but we're going to do it anyway so you can see what it looks like. Okay. So I'm going to create breakout rooms and you guys are going to go there now. So join your breakout room. And I will come in and visit some of them. Hello, breakout room one. You guys can unmute yourselves, by the way. If you go in your window, you can unmute yourself. Yep. Hello. Yep, and you can talk. You can also share with each other and play around with a couple of features. I will uh, see you guys back in a little bit. I'm going to switch and go to a different breakout room. Hello, breakout room two. Did you guys figure out you can unmute yourselves yet? Hover your mouse over your window and unmute yourself, and you can talk and talk to each other. You can also share documents. Hello. There you go. Hi. <laughs> All right, I'm going to a different breakout room. I'll see you guys later. Hey. Hello, breakout room four. How are you guys? Good. Good morning. We were discussing. We were discussing if there's no virtual backgrounds in there, do we just have to drag them in there, download them? You would have to just add them in, yes, correct. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. All right, I'm gonna leave you guys and go one more breakout room, then I'm gonna bring everybody back. To have all the different drawing and- Hi, Paula. Oh, hi, Scott. I'm gonna go to different rooms since you're here. Okay. Hello, guys. Joe, figure out if you hover over your own name, you can unmute yourself and you can start talking and have a conversation. You can also share oh, yeah. and talk about stuff together. I'm going to end the breakout rooms. I'll bring you guys back in just a minute, but I'll give you another second to talk to each other, okay? Okay, welcome back everybody. Can you hear me? Okay, great, I see some modding has, it's fantastic. So breakout rooms there is just an opportunity for you to split kids up, put them in rooms, do things like that. Uh, it lets you, um, you know, have them in a room where they can talk and have discussions. If you wanna go that route, it's entirely up to you. Uh, my job today is just to kind of show you all the things that are available in this program and what you can do. Now the last feature everybody loves to see, and I do it last on purpose so you remember it, you can rename yourself. So if you have some funky looking name up there for yourself, if you hover over your picture, click on the three dots next to it in the top right hand corner, and then go to rename. You can rename yourself such as, um, I can rename myself Dr. Richmond instead of having my first name on there with you. Um, that's a really neat feature that you can use so that your kids see your, your appropriate name you use with them normally. You can also rename them. So you can actually, I can rename anybody in the room if I wanted to and change their name. So you can rename your kids to make sure they don't uh, put the wrong name in there. For example, doofus or things like, or something worse than that. Uh, you know what kids do, right? When they have opportunities, they will push any button they can to see if they can get something done. And so at some point we have to stop them and make sure it's not there. Um, those are the features I wanted to show you guys this morning. Um, basically when you're done, oh, last thing, I'm sorry, I forgot about the video recording. I, I said I would do that. When you are done with your chat, if you're recording it like I am now, you can stop any time. There is a link in the bottom of my menu that says stop recording. So my bottom menu, I can stop recording right now. When I do that, the program won't do anything until I actually end the chat. So I'm going to do that in a moment and show you the recording and where it saves it. But um, it won't process it until the actual chat's over because obviously we're still actively going. So I'm going to stop that recording.